Uh, the most interesting launch that I was ever part of occurred on January 17th, 1997. It was the launch of the first new version of the GPS satellite. It was GPS-2R1 launching aboard the top of a Delta II from Complex 17B. And my role that day was to observe strip charts and monitor certain functions from the data station. After liftoff, as was customary, um, I would walk into the blockhouse to, to stand with the, uh, the console operators and uh, see what they were observing in terms of data and the count and watch the rocket fly on the, on the monitors. One of the solid motor cases failed uh, and it, it caused an explosion at the base, to, base of the rocket which then caused the, the onboard self-destruct system to go. And boy, did that rocket just go off like a giant fireworks display with uh, you know, fire and flame everywhere. I was standing next to my boss at the time. Uh, his name was Andy Haupt. And Andy was one of these guys that was always positive, always in control. What Andy said was, boys, this is bad. And he dove under his console and all the engineers on either side followed suit. And I just stood there dumbstruck for a number of seconds until the falling pieces of solid motor and other rocket debris started crashing down and exploding around us. When the rocket exploded, it was about 1,600 feet into, into flight. It was approximately a third of a mile up. And so there was no sound immediately when the light show happened on the monitor. Two seconds later, it, uh, it made that incredible blast wave that shook the blockhouse. You know, then, then we knew it was really close. Nothing happened inside the blockhouse other than dust coming in from the ceilings and you know, some bookcases falling over and things of that nature. This piece of debris that fell in the cable tray had the effect of catching the cables on fire, which started to burn back into the blockhouse. The amount of smoke that came in through the penetrations you know, got greater and greater. We had a very good chief launch conductor at the time, Rick Navarro, who was in constant communication with safety officials in the fire department. Uh, right when we got to critical mass and, and had to make a move was the, almost the exact moment that the, the fire department banged on the door. We all had plastic bags over our heads with uh, breathing air pumping into them and were being escorted by the fire department off to the uh, northeast or to an awaiting bus. Those of us who had parked there saw that uh, there wasn't a whole lot left. Um, in my case, my, my truck was completely destroyed. The aluminum had just completely melted down into puddles on where the side of the wheels were. The inside of the, the, the truck was essentially gone. There was nothing left except the metal structure. And oddly enough, also the glass from the, the two side doors had melted and laid in on the inside of the truck and looked like glass waterfalls running down into the footwells. Got a hold of my insurance company and explained I had a total loss of my vehicle. And when asked what happened to it, I explained that my truck had been hit by a rocket. And the, uh, the, the woman on the other end uh, didn't really know how to process that. I said, put on CNN. And uh, just at that time, they were cutting to the video, and she saw it while we were on the phone. And she said, oh, my God, I understand. OK, we'll be back with you, Mr. Mosdell, for any additional details. I'm Brian Mosdell, and that's my untold story from the Rocket Ranch.